My name is John Sauer, uh, and I am a constitutional attorney based in St. Louis, Missouri. And today I come to offer my opinion that uh, the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium, and in fact the whole course of conduct that the Federal Department of Education has undertaken in sort of herding and corralling states into the Common Core aligned uh, curriculum and system of assessments has been unconstitutional under the Compact Clause of the Federal Constitution and has been undertaken in violation of numerous federal statutes. Uh, by way of background, the Compact Clause of the U.S. Constitution provides in Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, that no state shall, without the consent of Congress, enter into an agreement or compact with another state. The Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium is unquestionably an interstate compact, and it is unquestionably something that Congress has never consented to. It is therefore unconstitutional. In addition to that, it constitutes a shocking, <laughs> a very surprising uh, course of conduct of federal overreach and federal taking over of state and local control of education that runs counter to hundreds of years of our constitutional tradition, which allocate state and two state and local entities control over public education. The federal government engaged in, in order to move, curb, corral, push, coerce the states into the Common Core regime, uh, which is not as well known as some of the other areas in which federal regulations have been challenged. Uh, and, in, and I want to follow up by highlighting the three specific ways in which this has been in violation of federal statutes and unconstitutional under the federal constitution. I think it's quite clear that the current federal Department of Education made it a priority. It's probably its key priority for this particular administration to engage in a regulatory course of content that would effectively substitute the requirements of the No Child Left Behind Act, which for better or for worse actually did pass through Congress, were voted on by elected representatives and became the law of the United States, with a regulatory regime that has never been uh, uh, signed off on by Congress or voted on, to my knowledge, by any federally elected official, where Congress has repeatedly again and again emphasized that nothing that it authorizes the Federal Department of Education to do should permit that department to engage in, quote, any kind of direction, supervision, or control of curriculum or programs of instruction in state and local education. So in the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, it states that no state shall be required to have academic content or student achievement standards approved or certified by the Federal Department as a condition of receiving federal funds under the ESEA. And yet that is exactly what we've seen in the past, essentially, six years, a five to six year course of conduct by the Federal Department of Education. In two phases, offer a total of billions and billions of dollars to the states, to any state applying, uh, uh, who, who, would, it, it, who would make a commitment to the Common Core state standards. The phrase in the regulations is a common set of K through 12 standards. You received a very substantial bonus points, additional points uh, on your application for all this money if you made that commitment. And uh, you heard Dr. Stotsky testify that that's exactly what the state of Massachusetts did. Number one in the country, or at the very top of the pack, so to speak. It nevertheless, to get the money, made that commitment. Uh, and at that time, I believe 45 or 46 states made a commitment to Common Core in exchange for these federal grants. Specifically, the state of Missouri, where I'm from, uh, joined the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. Uh, North Dakota is a, also became a member of that in 2010. Uh, in, in addition to that, uh, another consortium was formed, PARC, uh, which is similar, uh, very similar, and engages in similar work to the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. Uh, uh, over 40 states uh, made that commitment as well. Uh, and those states took the federal money and started in the process of developing these assessments that are aligned to the Common Core. Uh, there are several features of these consortia if you actually look at the legal documents that a state official signed off on. Uh, these documents involve uh, very surprising commitments in many ways. The consortia have elaborate external governance structures with governing boards and executive committees. They have their own staff. They purport to operate outside the, uh, the sort of uh, open records laws of the various states and the federal government that they're involved in. Uh, they involve a binding commitment by the state officials who sign off on them to abide by the decisions of the governing boards uh, on key areas of educational policy which the constitutional tradition allocates to those very states. So there is a, a seeding, 
a ceding of state sovereignty that's involved in the signing of these documents. Uh, they also involve a binding commitment to Common Core to use the assessments aligned with Common Core, and they involved, uh, uh, not surprisingly, the substantial involvement of the federal program officers. So the federal government is actively involved in the work of these consortia over the past four years as they develop the assessments that are aligned to Common Core with uniform national standards. And the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium, when it applied for hundreds of millions of dollars of federal funding to write these standards, in its application it said, the purpose of this consortium is to radically reshape the education systems of the participating states. So make no mistake that there was always a radical, far-reaching, federally involved intention in the, uh, in the way that, that, that all this was implemented using federal funds. More recently, uh, the federal grants for what raised the top, uh, the money runs out at the end of 2014. And in order to continue the work of the consortium, Smarter Balance arranged to re relocate itself and in a sense uh, sort of re reinvent itself, uh, but on very, very similar terms, uh, by moving and becoming housed at the University of California. In exchange for that, it asked all member states to sign a new memorandum of understanding and agreement. Missouri signed it in September of 2014. North Dakota signed this memorandum in, in November of 2014. This, this memorandum provides for a, a very serious continuity of, uh, of regulation, of governance, between Smarter Balance as it was housed in the state of Washington, and Smarter Balance as it's now housed at the University of California, and the new memorandums of understanding retain the key, uh, uh, key sort of features of the old ones, specifically the session of state authority to state and local education remains essentially the same in the new memorandum of understanding. In section 3.1 of that memorandum, the state purports to make a binding commitment to agree to be bound by the decisions of the governing board of the consortium, of which state, the, the state is one of less than 20, or of more than 20 members, uh, to agree to be bound on the decisions of the consortium that relate to the relevant areas of state and local uh, uh, educational policy. So there we, this, by signing this document, a senior state official reported to commit North Dakota, with certain exceptions, to be bound by the decisions of the governing board of the consortium. So the, 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 this purports to cede North Dakota's constitutionally protected sovereignty over state of <coughs> educational policy to the governance structure of this consortium. Second, what threat is there to the sovereignty of the member states, such as North Dakota? Well, again, I think the answer is very clear. First of all, there are contractual commitments made by senior state officials, not made by legislatures, but made by senior state officials, to abide by the decisions of a completely <coughs> external, non-North Dakota-based, for example, governance structure on key issues of educational policy. For example, if the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium says, state of North Dakota, you have to give three Smarter Balance tests per year. Your state, your, your state department has signed a binding commitment that they will abide by that, even if the sense of your voters, your constituents, your educational institutions is, that's a matter of bad policy. Uh, that is constitutionally problematic because, again, our constitutional traditions is that state and local educational policy is to be controlled at the state and local level, not at the federal level, and not by some quasi-federal external interstate consortium. 